Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to show you how to prep, paint, and polish a replacement fender for a fraction of the price you'd pay a body shop. I'm working on the $500 Toyota Camry this week, and I'm going to begin replacing this front fender, which was the victim of a parking lot hit and run. On a cheap daily driver, like this 225,000 mile Camry, it might not be worth paying the deductible and having insurance handle the repair if you even have full coverage. I looked locally for a used fender in the same metallic gray, but couldn't find one, so I bought this aftermarket one online for $30 shipped. Before I paint it to match, I bolted it on the car for a quick test fit to be sure all the body lines were even and nothing got tweaked in shipping. If any body work has to be done, it's best to do it before you go through the painting process. Now that I'm sure the fitment is good, I have it all set up for painting. Most body parts are shipped with this matte black primer called E-Coat or EDP, which stands for Electro Deposit Primer. Some paint manufacturers say it's okay to paint directly over it. Others say to use a primer sealer first. Let's take a look at some of the products I'll be using today. I have a roll of paper towels, more specifically the blue shop towels. They're tougher and leave less lint than the regular paper towels. Some wax and grease remover, a can of primer sealer, a couple cans of color matched paint, and clear coat. Here's a scuff pad, a tack cloth, and a half mask to help keep all these products out of my lungs. I have my fender on stands, so I'm standing comfortably and not all hunched over working on the ground. There's also a lot of dust on the ground, which I don't want near the fender. First, I'm using the scuff pad to scuff up the surface to help the primer bond better. I'm sanding in a crosshatch pattern instead of the same direction all the time. Here's the before and after comparison of how the surface should look. Now I need to clean all the sanding dust from the surface using the wax and grease remover and a towel. I can see here I have plenty of dust from sanding, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of the wax and grease remover onto the rag to make it damp. And then wipe the whole thing down. This step also removes any grease or oil from the surface, even though they might not be visible. Even touching the fender with your hands can leave oils. It's been about five minutes and the wax and grease remover should have evaporated by now. Uh, as you can see, it's still glossy and wet, and this can mean the product is too old. A lot of chemicals have a limited shelf life. So um, I'll leave this blooper in the video to remind everyone to always check the date on the product before applying it. Wow, 2005. You know, that might explain. I'll use this PPG DX330 instead. Now this is how fast a wax and grease remover should evaporate. With the fender clean and dry, it's time for primer sealer. I'm spraying all of the hard to reach areas first. These edges are the least visible when the fender is installed. I do these first so I don't apply too much extra on the visible areas while trying to cover the tight areas last. Once I have those done, it's time for the main surface. A big mistake is applying the coats too heavy. The first coat should look light and splotchy showing some of the black through. I can always add additional coats and that's better than dealing with a run because I applied the primer too heavy. Here's a better look at how light the first coat is. I'll let this dry for 10 minutes per the instructions on the can and come back for coat number two. A safe way to see if your coat has dried is to scratch it with your fingernail in a hidden area. The second coat of primer sealer should be just like the first. I'm keeping it light and doing the edges first and then the main surface. I see I have a thin area here and another here. Those aren't too bad though and will be covered up by the third coat, which is the wet coat. Final coat of primer. This coat is called the wet coat because it's a little heavier than the previous coats. I'm not going thick enough to produce any runs, but this coat should be heavy enough to look kind of glossy once it's down. This helps to fill in any of the lighter spray areas from the first two coats. Here's a close shot of the wet coat while it's still wet. You can see it's a little on the glossy side reflecting the lights. I let the primer cure overnight and it's nice and dry today. Let's take a closer look. Everything is uh, smooth and uniform. I'm running my hand across to feel for any debris that might be in the finish. 
Oh, what's this? With cats, it was bound to happen. A cat hair landed on here and dried into the primer. Hey, it happens, so I'll show you the easy fix. Here I have some 500 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to lightly sand the area where the hair is. 400 or 600 grit would work just as well. Now, I don't want to sand too much with just my fingers and risk removing too much material in such a small area going through the primer. So I have a foam sanding sponge. Using a sponge will help make the sanding process more uniform than just pressing with my fingers. This hair wasn't very deep in the primer, so I'm just going to lightly go over the surface to remove it. I can feel some other fine particles of dust when running my hand across the surface. So I'm using a sanding sponge wrapped in 500 grit to knock down those high points even with the rest of the surface. Be careful when using a sponge or a sanding block on an edge because it's easy to sand through the material in those areas. Now I'm wiping the entire surface down with some wax and grease remover. I'm just going back and touching up those spots on the edge where I sanded through the primer a little bit. I'm almost ready to paint, but the surface needs to be spotless, so I have a tack cloth. These are just thin cloths that are slightly sticky. I'm just going to lightly rub it over the surface, not even pressing down really. This cloth will pick up anything left behind by the towel and wax and grease remover. There you go. You can see some of the dirt in the tack cloth that was removed from the fender. Now that the prep is complete, it's finally time to paint. I picked up a couple cans of this perfect match from the parts store. It's supposed to match the Toyota factory metallic gray. One cool thing I found by reading all the instructions is that this little tip on the spray nozzle can rotate to adjust the spray pattern to be more vertical or horizontal. Just as I did with the primer, I'm spraying all of the hard to reach areas and hidden edges first. Again, I'm keeping the first coat light. Now I'm going over the main surface, the part that will be visible when the fender is installed in the car. You can see I didn't even cover all the primer yet, and that's just fine. Splotchy is alright for this coat. It's going too heavy that will cause problems. The second color coat is also a light coat, just like the first. Now the color has covered up all of the primer. You'll notice there's some orange peel happening. Orange peel refers to the tiny bumps throughout the surface instead of it being smooth like glass. That's just how lacquer paint tends to lay down, and having a metallic flake probably doesn't help. Professional urethane paint self-levels much better because the lacquer paint starts to atomize or dry as soon as it leaves the nozzle, so it doesn't lay down as smooth. But I'm going to fix that later with a polishing compound. On to the third coat of color, which will be the wet coat. This coat's going to be a little bit heavier than the first two. This helps to fill in any of the lighter spray areas from the first two coats and will help the finish look more glossy. Once again, I'm hitting all the hidden areas first before covering the main surface. Now I'm ready to start laying down the wet coat on the surface. I uh, have a drip on the nozzle and another drip. All right, I gotta stop right here. Uh, the uh, nozzle is spitting out tiny balls of paint onto the fender. So the nozzle was shooting little splats of paint onto the fender. There's a big one, there's one, there's another, there's some more. Too bad this happened on the final color coat. Uh, there's no way I can leave this the way it is. So I'm going to let this wet coat dry and do another wet coat with the other can to cover up all these paint splats. I took the spinning can outside and recorded it spraying in slow motion. You can see each time I let off the nozzle and the spray stopped, a little drop of paint followed. Alright, I have a new can of paint and I'm going to try this final wet coat again. Sometimes aerosol cans do that, so I'm going to leave that little bit in the video instead of editing it out. So if you get a spinning can, just set it aside, let the coat dry, and redo that coat with a fresh can. This fender would be a one can paint job, but I'm glad I bought the second can just in case. Better to have it and not need it than to make another trip to the parts store. Here's a close look at the wet coat applied. Some of the lighter orange peel has been filled in and the color is looking more smooth and glossy now. Also, the tiny globs of paint from the spinning can are no longer visible. Time for clear coat. 
I have two cans here. The labels are slightly different, but they're both clear lacquer paint. Uh, the older one has a ball that rattles. The newer one has no ball inside. I shook this thing forever, and I guess they figured the ball wasn't needed because there was no pigment in the paint. I'm using the older can with the ball inside to cover all the hidden areas, just in case this nozzle spits too. Now I have the new can, and I'm using that can for the main surface. The full can seems to have a wider spray pattern as well. The first layer of clear was light. I mentioned the old can is being used for the edges because it's almost empty. The new, more full can is used for the flat surface. Here's a tip about aerosol cans. The nozzle has a tube inside that goes down to the bottom of the can and grabs from the very bottom. This means when I'm holding the can upright, as I am when painting these edges, that it's going to suck up paint at the bottom continuously. If I turn the can sideways to paint a flat horizontal surface, the paint inside will flow to the side and the nozzle will spray out air or shoot blanks, which can also result in spitballs. So now I have the nearly full can for the horizontal surface. I'm able to turn the can at an angle to apply the paint more evenly on the surface than if I had to hold it upright. One thing to be careful of when it comes to lacquer paint is don't spill gas on it. You see, it's not chemical resistant, so gas on lacquer paint is about the same as paint thinner. This coat was a little heavier than light, but not quite a wet coat. I want the clear to be thicker because I'm planning on polishing the paint with a cutting compound to remove orange peel. And that process does remove some material from the surface, so some extra clear isn't a bad thing. Final coat of clear. I still have some clear left in this old can, so I'm using that on the edges again. If it does run out and spit any balls of paint, it's on the edge, which isn't visible when the fender is installed, so no big deal. Now I have the more full can for the surface. This is the final wet coat and I'm laying it on heavy, but not heavy enough to cause a run. You can see that last heavy wet coat made a huge difference in the level of gloss. Now that'll dull down some once the clear dries. There is some orange peel showing, but that's something I can fix after with polishing. Look at the reflection in the door. Now and the painted fender. My work here is not done. Wet sanding and polishing is a step for any paint job to look perfect, and that includes do-it-yourself aerosols. Now this $500 Camry isn't a show car, so I'm not trying to achieve a glass smooth finish. The orange peel on the fender isn't bad enough that I need to wet sand. Even the original paint has a tiny bit of orange peel. Because lacquer paint is soft compared to urethane, especially when it's fresh, I only need to polish this fender to get it to match the original paint. I applied some cutting compound and buffed the paint using a terry cloth pad on a low speed orbital buffer. An expensive variable high speed buffer isn't necessary when polishing out lacquer aerosol paint. Wet sanding is usually done first because it removes a lot more material than polishing and the polishing compound will take out any scratches left by the fine sandpaper when wet sanding. I'm taking a break to check my progress. Right now I'm looking at the factory paint on the A pillar. Here you can see a good reflection. Now let's compare it to the fender. I have some more polishing to do in this area here. I polished out most of the orange peel on the top edge. Some of the contours are hard to get into with the buffer, so sometimes they need to be done by hand. With a large surface of the 10 inch polishing pad, it can be easy to remove too much material from the clear coat on some of the edges and raised areas while trying to get into the recessed areas. So. I'm going to polish this recessed area by hand. Yeah, this might take some elbow grease, but it's precise and easy to control. I'm using the same compound on a terry cloth and just going in tiny circles. And let's have a look at that shine. Again, because this is fresh lacquer paint, it's soft enough to easily polish by hand or low speed orbital buffer. If I wanted to wet sand or polish farther, I would have applied more coats of clear to allow safe removal of more orange peel. I brought the car outside to get a better look at the final result, and I'm extremely happy with this. You just saw the budget paint process from start to finish. I'm gonna let the car sit in the sun for a few days to fully cure the paint, and then I'll put a coat of wax over the fender to seal and protect the new paint. Here's a look at the before and the after. For less than 100 bucks, and that's including the cost of the replacement fender, I did this job right here in my garage. I hope this video will save you some money doing this job yourself.
Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. I read them all. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe for more how-to videos and other project updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.